It has been revealed that Harry will need to seek permission if he intends to stay in a royal residence during his upcoming visit to the UK. He is scheduled to attend the Wild Child Awards on September 7, following the day before the first anniversary of the late Queen's passing. Just two days later, he will be heading to Germany for the start of the Invictus Games in Dusseldorf. However, a significant challenge lies in deciding where he will stay marking the first time this situation has arisen. Harry has returned to his home country following his departure with wife Meghan from their residence at Frogmore Cottage in Windsor. The cottage had been given to them as a wedding gift by the late queen. However, the couple only lived there for a little over a year before leaving the UK to start a new life in the United States. They did use the cottage on a few occasions during visits to England, but earlier this year, they agreed to give it back. Reports state that Charles, Harry's father, chose to have his son and daughter-in-law vacate the cottage due to their repeated public criticisms of the royal family. With no UK residents currently available to them, this decision was made. According to The Telegraph, if Harry wants to stay on royal estates during his trip, he'll need to ask for permission. Alternatively, he might have to inquire if he can stay with friends or book a hotel. Additionally, Harry will have to arrange his own private security for the UK visit, as he no longer receives automatic police protection. He had tried to challenge this in court but wasn't successful. The news of his visit coincides with insiders confirming that neither the King nor Prince William plan to meet with Harry, and he doesn't have intentions to meet them either. A source has revealed that relations between Harry and the royals remain at an all-time low especially after the claims and accusations made in Harry's memoir. The insider also mentioned that any potential reconciliation between the two parties, if possible, is still a long way off. A source remarked, Although some might suggest that it would be fitting for the family to reconcile, maybe even as a tribute to the late queen, the reality is that there's still a considerable distance to go. This sentiment was highlighted when the source mentioned Meghan Markle's absence from the invitation list for the commemoration of the late Queen's passing. Royal commentator Amanda Platell mentioned that neither Harry, Meghan, nor their children Archie and Lily have apparently received an invitation from King Charles to attend the commemorations marking the first anniversary of the Queen's death. Considering that Harry and Meghan's primary identity is tied to their royal status, this exclusion might be especially hurtful for them. It's implied that the new king may now be repaying perceived debts, and according to Ms. Platel, this decision deserves applause. Ms. Platel believes the message is clear. The couple is not welcomed at these events. She agrees with this stance, as it means they won't be able to exploit the upcoming significant royal ceremonies for their personal documentary projects next month. And some source claimed, Wellchild CEO, for removing Harry. Prince Harry is set to make a return to London for a significant charitable event, the Wild Child Awards. He holds the position of patron for this organization, which he strongly supports. These awards are a platform to honor the bravery and strength displayed by seriously ill children and their families. Nonetheless, the announcement of Prince Harry's upcoming return has sparked a range of responses. Certain parents connected to Wild Child have voiced their dissatisfaction and even launched a petition advocating for his removal as the organization's patron. A representative speaking on behalf of one parent expressed reservations regarding Prince Harry's suitability, pointing to his past challenges and actions as a cause for concern. They are raising doubts about his capacity to be a role model for mental and emotional well-being, bravery, and resilience. The parents are actively pushing for his dismissal and have shared their concerns about having their children in close proximity to him. In addition to these parents, anti-drug advocates have also voiced their disapproval of Harry's actions, stating that he is conveying an inappropriate message to the younger generation. This criticism arose after he openly discussed drug use earlier this year. In a live stream interview with therapist Dr. Gaber Mate, Harry mentioned how he had used cannabis a Class B drug, to cope with mental health challenges following his mother's passing. During that conversation, he also discussed his positive encounters with psychedelic substances, including ayahuasca. He claimed that ayahuasca provided him with feelings of relaxation, release, comfort, 
and a sense of lightness that he managed to retain for a certain period. Dr. Mate, known for advocating drug decriminalization, has reportedly used ayahuasca to help patients dealing with mental health issues. Harry also shared his experiences with cocaine, noting that it didn't have a significant impact on him. He saw it more as a social activity, providing him with a sense of belonging. He believed that cocaine altered his state of mind from his usual feelings, similar to the way marijuana did. In an interview, Harry mentioned that those substances genuinely made him feel better. But his words also make people wonder if groups like Little Soldier, the Well Child Organization, and the Invictus Games might stop working with him because he used drugs. How does it seem when Harry is a patron of Scotty's Little Soldiers and the Invictus Games? These organizations are against using drugs. Could it be risky for kids to look up to Harry, hear him talk about how marijuana might help, and then think it's okay to use it because Harry said so? It's hard for parents to argue against the idea that if these charities and groups keep being linked to someone who promotes drug use, they might lose support. People might not want to support their work if their patron supports using drugs. They should think about their own reputations instead of sticking with a royal who's promoting something unpopular and harmful. This is especially important considering Harry's upcoming visit to the UK. Fans of the royals are posting an old speech of his from three years ago, where he became emotional and cried while on stage. Some people are sharing the video on social media, and one user commented that they think Harry's tears during the speech might have been planned to create a dramatic effect. A well-known royal commentator and YouTuber named Taze expressed, I'm really tired of hearing about Harry crying at the Wild Child Awards. He visibly chuckles, snorts, and then playfully fakes crying using the most basic words. He put on the saddest expression he could muster, though he jokingly suggested that even an amateur actor could do better. Harry shared a laugh with someone in the audience, most likely Megan. And in recent days, Nypost.com posts article about King Charles pushed Prince Harry and Meghan. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle might have pushed King Charles to the brink, as suggested by a royal expert. Charles Ray, the former royal editor of The Sun, mentioned that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's multiple criticisms against the royal family have solidified their status as complete outsiders. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are now seen as complete outsiders. Their HRH titles, His and Her Royal Highness, have been removed from the royal family website, he explained to Talk TV. While the couple, who got married in 2018, still hold their Sussex titles, they are no longer allowed to use their now-defunct HRK titles to advance their careers, according to Ray. You can only push someone like King Charles so much, and Harry and Meghan have pushed him to the edge. It's only natural that they are now being excluded, he continued. They won't be invited to any upcoming royal events anymore. Moreover, there isn't an official memorial planned for Queen Elizabeth. Even though they are in Europe for the Invictus Games, it's said that the couple didn't receive an invitation to a private event at Balmoral Castle on September 8, which is intended to commemorate one year since the passing of Queen Elizabeth.